Oh, it seems like you're just not answering the question. Go on, Josh. Okay, so I would say the Bible doesn't teach that. So what is it? Even though it wasn't, even though the world view the people writing, okay, held to the earth and flat, held to them thinking that you know there was pillars that was holding it up. Yes, yes. They, that mechanism was utilised. Their world view okay, to put across the message. So the Bible isn't teaching the message that the earth is flat. It's teaching something else. It's utilising that world view okay, so, to put across so, that message. Oh, thank you very much, Josh, for your very uh, well put. You know, honestly, really, on this issue, because here you're saying that it's using the worldview. But what I'm saying is that from a Quranic perspective, right? If you look, for example, in chapter number 39, verse number five, yeah, it says, "Shukoo al Layla al Nahar al Kulum Hara al Layla Sakhar al Shamsu al Kamar Kulun Yajli al Ajli al Musanna." It says that he rolls the day into the night and rolls the night into the day, and he he causes the the sun and the moon moon to move in their orbits, and all of them are running to an affected affected appointed time. These verses, as well as chapter number 36, verse number 40, which is Rakumu from Kalaki Yasbaho, that all of them are in the, talk about this, the earth, the sun, and the moon, it says all of them are in the you know, orbit in their own axis, makes it very clear to us that, from an Islamic perspective, that the shape of the earth is round. Now, there are other verses in the Quran that says, you know, uh, and he spread the earth and this kind of thing chapter 79 verse 30 but now if you look at what the classical exegetes have said if you look at the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah who was about 800-900 years old uh, what existed like 800-900 years ago or Ibn Hazm or, 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 or Ahmed ibn Hamad who died 241 all of these individuals come to the conclusion that the earth is actually round Ibn Hazm said that the verse in chapter number 39 verse number 5 it necessitates the earth being round because if, if you're talking about the rolling, because taqwir, the word in Arabic, necessitates a ball. It actually necessitates a ball. So they, without use of, let's say, the scientific evidences, just from the exegetical approach, or the hermeneutical approach, I mean, here they extrapolated that the earth is round. Now, here, this was in an ancient society where the majority, I'm not going to say all people said that the earth is flat, but the majority of that time maintained that the earth was flat. However, despite that, the scholars of Islam had come to a conclusion that the earth is actually round. Now, my question to you is, doesn't this show you, first of all, that you can have a book that refers to and speaks to an ancient people in such a language as would allow them to actually extrapolate more about the universe, yes, in a language which they still understand, point one. And point two, doesn't this show that the Quran, in this case, is more accurate in a, in a plain way than the Bible? So, I would say, uh, no, I disagree with you. Um, because the problem that you have if you're going to utilize, uh, you know, let's say a scripture to tell you about the natural world, number one, natural theories or the scientific theories are not certain, as I said. So, let's say that. Okay. 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 No, 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 it's not certain. It's not certain. It's not certain. No, it's not certain. It's not certain. So, it's a, a theory is just a well evidenced hypothesis. Yes. And so, they've got a lot of evidence that supports it. But scientists work um, to falsify theories. No, what I'm and saying. So, no, so one second. So, so let's say, yeah, yeah. let's say, yes, yes. 500 years from now, yes. the Earth being round was falsified. Where would the Quran be with that? You'll have to say, oh no, we're speaking metaphorically. No, we wouldn't. And it would change your interpretation. No, no, let me, let me, let me correct that. To be fair, okay. yeah? yeah, please. Because actually, there were times in Islamic history, like for example, the Quran in chapter 21, verse 30. It explicitly references an inception of the universe, just like in Genesis chapter 1 it does as well. Yeah? So in these two books, the Quran and the Bible, it always has said that the universe had started. Now, if you look at the steady state theory, it always has said that the universe was there forever. Like, for example, even now you have inflation or internal inflation models within the scientific framework, which say that the universe um, was there forever or something. Yeah? Now what I'm saying is that the Quran and the Quranic exegetes have always maintained the same thing. They had always maintained that the universe had a beginning, despite the fact that scientists had gone against that. Nowadays, in regards to human evolution, we don't we don't, we don't accept human evolution. Human evolution is, is something. It's yeah, bollocks. we don't believe. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I shouldn't okay. use that word. So he agrees with me. Absolutely. Yes, it's absolutely we don't, bullshit. We, we might say sorry, we, might, we might agree with. No, it's some not you. It's not, it's not your idea. Look, oh, we might agree, someone else's We idea. might agree with something like speciation or adaptation. That's not a problem. No. What we're saying why, is why, why don't you why don't you hold to that? I'm not, first of all, I'm not even saying macro evolution at the moment. What I'm saying is that in the Quran... Well, the evolution of Homo sapiens. Yes, yes. So why, why don't you... The reason that? why is because I have a different epistemological route to truth. So my epistemological route to truth necessitates going back to a literalistic... Or to the Quran, literalistically, and then that will give me all truth. 
since I believe that the authorship is actually a godly authorship. From that perspective, it's impossible for me to interpret the Quran as saying that evolution existed. Yeah. So I won't now going to try and say that evolution, human evolution in particular, happened because that would be disingenuity to the actual text. But does the Quran teach about, you know, they're saying the theory of gravity? The Quran does, but the thing is, if you, as we said before, Gravity was implied by the fact that the earth is round. Yeah? Does it teach? Um, it doesn't say gravity. No, no, okay, so that means, but then that means that you have to use an, um, an epistemology um, that utilizes the scientific Absolutely. to understand what gravity Absolutely. is. Absolutely. So, so, so I'm just saying. Stop you there one second. Yeah? I'm not saying that we shouldn't use such an epistemology. What I'm saying is that where the epistemology churns out results which are contrary to the text, we will reject that epistemology. We will reject the results. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so, but Christians don't. No, not you, Josh. No, but I was saying people that wrote the books. That yeah, you were yeah. Reading. No, no, no. So you would agree with me that Absolutely. some Christians now are just it's becoming flaky. That, that, that right. we've evolved. Can I? Sorry, Josh. No, you, I feel very passionate. What, what, what do you think about? Sorry, Josh. And it's sorry, not your ideas, Josh. No, no, it's all right. Josh. Sorry, Josh. It's uh, not your ideas. Yeah. It's someone else's ideas. Alexander. 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 How can I forget? Uh, Alexander. I was going to say to you. Now, do you reckon that there is any way that you can look at the biblical discourse and, and extrapolate or come to the conclusion that evolution of Homo never, sapiens? Never. Never. Do you, never would you million, agree? billion years. Would you but agree I, I, with me? I'll tell you what it is. It is yes. a lie from. It is a lie from hell. Would you, would you appreciate you agree? a humanistic approach that but says that the really there is there was no God and we didn't need God and therefore we just I, bounced, I, I, bounced yes. off of billions of Actually, years. Yeah, Actually, never come We bounced one more, one more into what we got into. Josh, I'm not attacking your idea. No, you're not. I just want to. I want to jump from promise you. I'll come back. Sorry, Josh. I just wanted to ask you a question. What I'm asking is very specific, right? Me and you both believe in, let's say, ancient texts, yeah? In the Bible, is there any way you can look at the Bible and conclude that human evolution is, is, is actually normal? Never in a billion years. Is there any verses you can never say? Never in a million, billion, trillion years. So is the Bible against Excuse human evolution? Is, is the Bible a trillion, okay. gazillion Is the Bible years. against human evolution? Yes. Okay, okay go ahead. Yes. Now, can I say 100% well, yes. That's fine if you say that, but that's not the majority of position of scholars. Evangelical Christians would hold Yeah, I'm not just saying America. evangelical um, Christians, I'm saying scholars who are studying the text themselves. So, so can you give us some names of some scholars? scholars. They're not can, scholars. No, yeah. Yeah, let me okay, ask sorry, you a question. On, can you give us some names of some pre-modern scholars before? Because now the thing is, it's easy to say scholars. You're nearly like you've nearly finished your PhD yourself, isn't it? Yeah, I've still got a bit of time. Yeah. Still so, got a bit of time. But what I'm saying is that these scholars have a bias. This bias is a scientific bias that's, that is informed by the 21st century narrative or 20th century narrative. I'm saying now, can you get me any of the scholars of the pre-modern world? Let's say, for example, 300 years or the rabbinical scholars that held to the fact that human evolution was a plausible oh, no. construct. No, not Plaus rabbinical. Like, like, you, 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 if you go to rabbinical scholars, that they, they would run, oh, run away from One second, you. one second. They would say, they'd say absolutely yeah, but, never, Josh. Can I say something? Sorry, yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I feel passionate about this. The theory of evolution was not formulated at that time, so obviously they would never utilize it. They were not scientists, so they wouldn't have understood that mechanism. But, like I said before, you can go to pre-modern scholars, such as Augustine. I think if I'm correct, Thomas Aquinas, which is around the 12th century. Um, so, the, yeah, the concept, right? so there are people, origin, um, what did they say? What is it? What is it? What is it? I'm saying that they hold to a metaphorical understanding of Genesis, or they hold to an analogical understanding of Genesis, but not everyone holds to it has to be literally material in that God created the world material. Okay, so but then, one second, then let's say we do move forward into you know our contemporary scholars now who aren't just saying that they want to hold on to evolution because there are, let's say, one of my favorite scholars studying in the Old Testament is John Walton. Um, very great scholar in, um, in America. He doesn't hold to evolution. He doesn't think evolution is actually great scientifically. But he says Genesis itself is not trying to teach us a sci um, the science of how humanity. Josh, can I can I just so, can I just say one thing? I'm not, I'm not sure if you would agree with me here, but I just want to say that it seems like you're contradicting yourself. What? Right, please, please. Uh, I'm sorry to put it in this blunt way because you're a very nice guy. But the reason why I think you're contradicting yourself is in the, in the beginning when I was talking about the shape of the earth. You said it's not certain that the Earth is round, right? And so therefore we can still maintain a flat Earth kind of understanding. You ask me, 500 years from now, if we discover that the Earth is not round, we would have to go back to metaphorizing the, let's say, the Quran or whatever it is, yeah? Now what I'm saying to you is that why don't you apply the same approach or attitude to your own scriptural reading? Because if you do so, what will happen necessarily is you should say, you should have at best an agnostic attitude to, the, to human evolution. You shouldn't say, because you don't know for certain that human evolution happens, you should say, I don't know if evolution happened or not. That's the maximum you can go. You can't say it definitely happened. Oh, no, so can I say, 
Okay, two things. Um, Would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, the, wow. the reason I hold to evolution is not on theological because I, I believe you can't. So I do agree with you that you can't um, extrapolate evolution from the biblical text itself. Yeah. Okay. Clear. That's but, clear. That's yeah, so clear. I agree that's with clear. you. That's I agree clear. with you. But I would say that I hold to um, evolution on um, the testimony of well-respected scientists. Okay, and I hold to it. So I hold to the principle of testimony. Do you say so, certain or do you say it's possible or probable? Oh, How probable. You... I hold to probability. Yes, okay. So the reason, the reason why it's even a theory, evolution is a theory, because like I said, theory scientifically means well-evidenced hypothesis. So you start off as a hypothesis, when you then bring around evidence or nothing, it then moves to a theory. Yes. And so I would hold to it on scientific grounds because there is good evidence in, in favour of it. But I would never say theologically. But do you not see that you're going against the Bible? No, because then that's what I was trying to tell you. Genesis is not teaching you about how um, humanity and, and the whole of you know, the life was created materially. But you said you take it literally. Yes, exactly. Literally. But then you have to say, what does creation mean literally to those people? Okay, so because you to within their worldview, yes. like I said, creation meant endowing function to someone to function this. Josh, and let's so, be straightforward here. No, but can I, can I, I, I'm with you, but I just want to straightforwardly ask you a question. Because yes. you know what you're doing here? Eventually renders the Bible unreadable. I'll tell you why. why. I'll tell you why. Please tell me. Yeah. It can do. No, yeah. Tell me the reason why. No, I'll tell you why. Now, if you're talking about the hermeneutical approach here, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the hermeneutical approach works in the, in the following way. Where you have clear verses describing certain transactions or certain interactions or certain processes, those verses are to be seen as uh, the main verses by which and through which we analyze the whole Bible. So for example, if the Bible says that Jesus was crucified, no one's going to say that that was a metaphorical reference and not actually an actual reference. Now, with what you've done with Genesis, actually, I could turn around and say to you, actually, even if you bring me a thousand, a ten verses, a hundred verses, so saying that Jesus was crucified, I'm just going to say the same thing that you've just said about the Genesis. Because then I'll have to say, you have to bring the context, put it... No, but then, I'm no, saying... No, you have to place it within its context. Yes. So, when I was saying about the creation of humanity and other... Well, I think that what word context is when, incredibly subjective. No, when you place it within the ancient universe, you try and say, how do I understand the world view of the writers? Okay, if, it, if I can look at other verses in, in, um, in the Bible, which are holy, then I can also use other texts. But Josh, it really does seem selective, selective no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. So I'm saying that's what I do. I'm saying there's a context here that we need to understand the world view. So then if you use that example of the crucifixion, you have to say, what does crucifixion mean? Should we take a metaphorical understanding or should we take a literal understanding? Well, when the Jews understood what crucifixion was and resurrection, it was always taken literally. So, okay, when the Jews understood, sorry, but let's just use your same words. When the Jews understood Genesis and when the Jews understand Genesis, they take it absolutely literally. They do. But functionally. They do. Functionally. They do. Functionally. No, but you're, functional no, and time-wise. No, no, so, so I'm saying literally, you need to understand what does it mean literally. Because you're saying literally means, or it just means materially created within six days. No, I'm saying it was created within these six days, but it was created in a functional manner. What does that mean? So let's say I gave an example before. It's an interesting Let, idea you yeah. got. No, it's not my idea. I'm saying no, no, I know it's not, I know it's not your idea. I wish it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you're a genius, okay, so are you. <laughs> no, but, um, people like John Walton. Um, so I think... I've got so I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you have a, uh, a hotel. I gave you this example before. Um, you can have the building, you can have all the beds, you can have everything, you can have the site. But it doesn't actually start to exist as a hotel until it starts functioning as well. When we start getting customers, we start getting you know, clients, you know, sort of, that's when it starts existing as a hotel, even though the material building is there. So what I'm saying to you that the material world was there, but it wasn't functioning in the manner okay, that it was so That to me is, to be honest, I have to be honest with you. Yeah. I think to Josh as well, uh, to Alexander as well, I think that is an incredible, I would call that hermeneutical gymnastics. Oh, not at all. I would, oh, what, why, you yeah, tell me the I, would, I would just say that you're using semantics. To, no, that's what I believe. I, I, what you just said there, using the word function, and using the word, I mean, the words that you've used, to almost no, uh, I mean, it has no, what you're saying has no meaning, basically. Either you believe it's a physical thing that happens, 
or you believe it's a metaphorical thing that didn't no, happen, but it was metaphor. describing something no, else? No, I don't think you're getting confused with the terms. I'm not saying metaphor. Okay. So I'm saying when, uh, use the example again, when a hotel literally comes into existence, it only comes into existence when it starts functioning as a hotel. Even though there's the buildings, even though there's everything there that's materially there. When it starts having clients and customers, it then starts functioning as a hotel. But and thus, one second, one second, thus, it comes into existence. No, but I get what you're saying, but I don't really get what you're saying. I'll tell you why. Because what you're saying is really nothing to do. Now, if I ask you a straightforward question, is the Earth, yes, when we say it's six day creation, are we going to limit that to 6,000 years or not? Alexander says we are going to limit that, let's say for example 6,000 years, years or 6 days or less. Why? Because he is, I have to be honest with you Josh, I believe he is more, I have to be honest, I'm sorry to say it like this, yeah? I believe he's more genuine with the text. I believe he just looks at but, it um, you, and you reads it as it should be read. I'm, I'm saying, as like I was saying, it wasn't my idea. And so, so you have to go and argue against the scholars who are utilising those, 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 that hermeneutics and say, tell me the reason why the utilisation of that hermeneutics is incorrect. Because we will normally do that. If I want to understand the text, I need to understand the world view of the person writing it. Because I need to understand the purpose of what the author was trying mm, to say. Newton would and say so, he just accepted yeah, it in faith, by faith. <coughs> yeah, but Newton, I'm not taking him as a... <coughs> As a, as a credible theologian on this um, issue. So, he was, I would, he was a brilliant theologian. <coughs> yeah, but I'm saying on this issue. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, okay. I, you can have brilliant yeah. theologians, but, no, 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 but, but his, 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 his idea of time was perfect as well. Oh, I, yeah, I yeah. Okay, see, look, I mean, this is what. <coughs> sorry, sorry, can I just. Yeah, ahead, so, yeah. if you spoke to me, I, we are in a culture that's very materialistic. Yeah. And so, <coughs> when you say something is creative, <coughs> sorry, you say that it's materially brought about. But when you were speaking to a Jew at that time, sorry, someone living in that time, they didn't hold to creation in a materialistic manner. I don't agree they with They held to... I have no, to be honest, I don't agree with so that. I'm you so I, I would just say to you, look, where can you find me evidence? Where is there any sign of exegetical... What was, the, what was the majority opinion? If you go to Jewish people now and ask them, do you believe that the universe was created, as it says in Genesis, materially, literally, they would say yes. They would say yes. I, I, would, dis I would disagree. No, they would, I'd be I'm honest with you. I, no, but I would disagree. I'm spending time with a lot of, with the rabbi here for, for yeah, a long time now, one discussing one these one things. One Sorry, go on. I would say, well, number one, it's not actually a fair test. Because even if you go to a Jew now, it doesn't mean that they share the same worldview of the person. But it's their book. It's their book. It doesn't mean it. I can find... They have a scholastic tradition. I can find... They've got the scholastic tradition. One second. You can find an old... The Christians are dumb. Sorry, so not you, but a lot of these leading Christians at the moment. They're dumb as you like, Josh. I would disagree with that. There's... Not you, not you, not you, not you, but a lot of them are. Yeah, but uh, in any in any um, uh, uh, faith system or any system, you can find people who are not sadly, as intelligent. But sadly, they're the ones that everybody's looking at. No, they're not. I'm saying I would disagree with Ken Ham. So Ken Ham is one oh, of the people. Okay. No, okay. but he goes forward yeah. with his younger he does, he materialist does. and everything like that. I would disagree with him. And the majority sure. of scholars would say, sorry, he's not credible. If I, if I was to put him when I was doing my BA in theology, Ken Ham in my essay, they'll say, what are you talking about? He's not right. a credible source. Right. But if you go to someone who's respected, such as let's say, or, Let's say Walter Brueggemann, who's one of the, the greatest Old Testament scholars, he would say that's actually the correct way to interpret um, uh, that text. I think within that context. So, okay, to go now, you, okay, now you've got two choices. No, but can I give you an example? One second. Exactly. So let's say there's someone like um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm understanding this Islam, and I think one of the best people is someone like Tim Winter. Okay, great. Would you say he's a good scholar or is he? Spectrum. I wouldn't call him a scholar. Okay, but, is he but that's not because of. Is he I, anyway, I, I just think that in his quarters and his areas, he is respected. Okay, his okay, good. Yeah. But he's not someone. Let's say he's an Arab, or he's not someone who's you know. He's, he, I so, don't think he would call himself a scholar. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. but I'm saying. <coughs> It doesn't matter. I don't need to go and find an arrow to say, okay, if I want to have a correct interpretation of the Quran, <coughs> there could be someone who's skilled <coughs> in Arabic who's not an Arab. So the same way there can be someone who's skilled in Old Testament hermeneutics. <coughs> He's not a Jew. What's grammarians, by the way, from the San Francisco? <coughs> Sorry, this is, is it like Cassidy Way and it's it's like all of these guys who are not Arabic. <coughs> but having said that, let me just go back to what you were saying. Just like last week. My initial. Old thing. Josh, I'll be, I'll be yes, frank sorry. with you, right? Uh, I, I'll, I'll be frank. I think this guy's very straightforward. I think you are straightforward, but in your own way. But I just want to say something to you, right? I, my initial thesis is as follows. We all agree, all three of us, that actually science is not a perfect measure for <coughs> obtaining ultimate truth of certainty. That's point one. Philosophically, that's understood if you, if you study the philosophy of science. Okay, point one. 
point two, my second point was to you, if this was my contention, if you do <coughs> take science as a barometer, and that's a conditional sentence, even if you do that, if you compare, for example, the Quran and the Bible, you'll find that the Quran, the Quran is more, um, is, is less disparate than the Bible in terms of science. In other words, my, my contention is, that the Quran is yeah. the most co closely correlated religion to science in the world. Well, yeah, so, well number one. Now, having said that, I think you have to qualify. Uh, I'm not, I'm it's, the most, it's the most related to current day science. Okay, fine. Which could be disproven. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So I'm saying, no, no, thank it you. could be disproven. So you would agree with me, then? No. If, if the, 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 the Quran was written to tell us about the natural world, then I'll say that it's great. But like I was saying before, the Bible is not written to tell us about the natural world. Okay. Now, what I'm saying, saying to you, Josh, majority, so Josh, my initial point. What it's not really a point of contention then. Yeah. Alexander, he will say, look, I don't, this is what Alexander will say, tell me if I'm right. Yeah? Alexander, because he has absolute faith in the biblical discourses, a, a, a pure epistemological truth, or it's his epistemological root of truth, he will say, I don't care. You know, that's what he'll say. He'll say, I don't care if the Quran is closely correlated to science or not. That doesn't mean that it's true. Yeah, as, a, as a book, I, I, I think. Sorry, so, sorry. That, that is basically what's coming up. Just to say about and that's the, not a problem. That's yeah, a terrible thing. Just to say about the, the, um, the epistemic mean, the epistemic methodology. Like, I think it's self defeating You can't have that as an epistemic or epistemological methodology. Well, which one? <coughs> Let's say you know you assume what the Bible says, and it's, or you assume what the Quran says, and then if it goes against that, then you, you say no, I don't agree. I think that's sort of incorrect because it becomes circular reasoning. Because then how do you lay a foundation for the Quran being true? It yeah. has to be itself I'm from not, the Quran. Exactly. And then you get into a vicious circle. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, I'm saying that if, and this is the conditional, I'm not saying everyone accepts science as a uh, ultimate truth system. It can't be though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. It, it's the reason it I agree, can't be, because that would be self But what I'm saying is, I'm saying yeah. if, it's a conditional sentence, if you do, or anyone does, accept science as a good measure of ultimate truth, or truth, because it can't be this ultimate truth. My contention is that the Quran of this course is most closely correlated in terms of all of the ancient world religions. Now, Alexander will say, I don't care, who cares? Because really, he believes that whatever God says in the Bible is what God says in the Bible, uh, and that's, that's how it is. So whatever science gets of truth or falsehood, that might change, it might be whatever. That is a tenable position. I have to hold my hat to it. I have to say it's not untenable. No, I don't think it's untenable at all. I think okay. it's completely tenable position. Why? Because he's made his base the Bible. Yeah. But so now we have to say something else. Now we have to say, now we can't, with someone like him, I'll say, look, I can't use science. I can't try and convince this man of science. Why? Because for him, his scientific understanding is actually derived from the Bible, where the Bible makes it clear about scientific process. It's the same as Newton, he was drawing this scientific theory from the Bible. Yeah, many, many, but he was a Unitarian, by the way. He was, yeah, yeah, no, he was, he was, a, he was yeah. not a Trinitarian. He wasn't a Trinitarian, no, yeah, and I agree with him. Yeah. Oh, but this man is almost there. No, he wasn't, he wasn't a Unitarian. <laughs> oh, you're a Unitarian. He was a Trinitarian. Are you not a Trinitarian? Yeah. Are, you, are you a Trinitarian? Are you? Are you? Oh, oh, so I'm not a Trinitarian. Oh, you're not a Trinitarian? Oh, and he wasn't either. So you're a Unitarian? Yeah. I think this is going to be another interesting oh, no, discussion. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. My, my understanding of the meaning of the Godhead is very interesting. And so we were just talking touch on this as well, weren't yeah. we? Well, we were talking about this earlier. So you, but you don't, let me just, sorry, I'm saying your position. Yeah, right? please. Is your position that you don't believe that Father God and the Holy Spirit my are position, all gods and they're all right? My position is, is very similar to Newton in, 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 the sense, uh, in the sense that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were there at the beginning. Uh, the Bible doesn't mention Trinity. Uh, Jesus was then came to earth as man, as God, died as man, as God. But, he, but Philippians 2 is important. He's laying aside his majesty. So he wasn't requiring worship as a man prior to the resurrection. Post resurrection, it then changed. Cool. But was he God? He came to her, the son of uh, Jesus was there before the foundation. Yeah. So he was, he was, he was divine. And he was, yes, he was, yeah, absolutely. Well, oh, yeah. no. We have to insult yeah. No, but then you're not a Unitarian. No, 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 I'm not either. No. What? Sorry. <laughs> okay, I thought you, you were a Unitarian. Okay. So then, Prior to the resurrection, he wasn't requiring worship, he was going to God. Okay. Oh, I don't know, that doesn't negate from the Trinitarian no, no. So then you're not a Unitarian, you're a Trinitarian. Can I say I'm something? Not Can either. I say something? What? Josh and Alex, <laughs> sorry. sorry to be so blunt and yeah. 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 This is what is wrong with Christianity. Now you can look at your, your main precept, I'm talking about the Trinity. And come to such a differentiated conclusion. But the Bible doesn't talk about Trinity. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes. So my point was, my, look, the Islamic position. Can I, can I, wait, hold on. Sorry, I'll let you. The Islamic position has always been as follows. 
The same position has always been that God is one, without a second or a third. Absolutely. As it's mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1, it's one. Shema'i Asra'il Adonai This is mentioned in, you know, one God. That's never changed. That truth stays as it is forever. Yeah? Our position as Muslims is that not only is God one, that, the, that Jesus is the Messiah, yes. He is one of the greatest prophets, yes. He was born as the Virgin Mary, yes, from the Virgin Mary, yes. But he was not the son of God of God. That's our position. That he was sent as a mighty messenger to transform nations. Now, or the nation of Israel in particular. Now, do you agree with this notion or do you, do you agree with the Godhead or the idea that God, the Father is God, the, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God? Look, it, it, it's paradox. It's God and Son. Uh, Sorry. Jesus was God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Paradoxical or mystery. That's, that's what it is logical. Oh, but it's a oh, mystery. No, no, but it is the, the Godhead is a mystery. Because God is one. He is one. And, and, and it's a mystery that yeah. the Holy Spirit and the Son no, but were also there. The the with the no, no, no. How do you hold on? Yeah. Yeah. Now, a paradox, is, let's, let's be fair. A paradox is something which contradicts itself. It does contradict itself. Well, actually, it does. Well, what's that called? Sorry, sorry. A paradox is an apparent contradiction. Yes, yes. So something that seemingly, seemingly, yeah, seemingly yeah. contradicts itself. Yeah, okay, okay. But the majority of theologians have never taken that position. Because how do you move something that's apparently contradicting to a real contradiction? Well, you, can I ask you a question, Josh, please? Yeah? Do you take, we are talk about science, right? Adam, and now let's such, talk about logic. Okay, here I'm talking about the branch of logic, which let's say uh, Aristotle kind of formulated yes, yeah, yeah. this um, logic. Yeah? From a logical perspective, do you not agree that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, all those three, being God in he their own right you. and God in one, one God in one time you. is a contradiction. Not not so live. that would be. A, a good life. I believe. I believe I mean, that that's, that's oh, not. Yeah. You're not using logic. Can, okay, can I tell you why? I think he's right. You can can I tell you why? Life in your own strength. Um, when you, you say something logically contradictory, you have to say the description of the thing you're trying to describe is inconsistent. So I'll give you an example. Married bachelor. When you describe a married bachelor, the term married and bachelor contradictory. Yes. Yes. When we say that God is one, okay, or one in essence, and three persons, you're not using the terms in a way that are contradictory. When I say that God is one, or the majority of theologians would say or philosophers, they would say that, well, one in what way? They instantiate the one divine nature, the one divine essence. Okay, so okay. is there one but divine essence or more than one divine No, there's one divine essence which is instantiated. Okay, but well, what it seems like you've yes. done here is you've gone back to a modalist. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Tell me what. Right, so, as you know, I mean, this is your. We had a discussion before. We had a long discussion. Too long. Just for the yeah. This is his doctoral thesis. Isn't it? Yeah, well, it's part of it. I mean, yeah. So, correct me if I'm wrong. You're the expert. Literally, you're going to be the expert. How many years are you going to finish your thesis? I still, still got two years. Still got two years. So I still got a bit of time. All right, well, you're, 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 you're well qualified here to actually educate. Yeah, right? yeah. so that's why. My question to you is. My view of modernism is that you've got one God and divided into two parts. That's the no, 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 no. Modernism is when there's one person who sequentially has three different modes. Okay, that's fine. So let's say he's the father. But there's one, one essence. There's one no, no, there's just one God like me. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. So let's say there's one person. Yeah. Okay, I'm a father. One you know, I'm going to be a father, sorry. so I'll be a father, God willingly, but um, let's say I'm a father, I'm a son, and I'm a husband, okay? Those are three ways that I am those six, father, son, yes, yes. but I'm still one person. And one time I'm a father, so another time I'm a son, and okay. so that would be modalism. When I was saying that God is the same as father and husband, because they are different. So, 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 yeah, that's what I'm so it is a yeah, modalism. Is so okay, what are you describing? You so, said there's one divine essence. One divine essence, which is instantiated by the three divine persons. 
okay? Yeah, so, the only truth okay, can I, okay, is, yeah, I, the I, one I, divine no, nature, can, can, I, can I make it? Yeah, yeah, but I just, can I? I don't, I don't see how that's not a paradox. Okay, so, I think it one, is a paradox. Then God will pour can his I, can grace I, into your life. And give you a uh, new there's life. one divine and we'll nature, give you okay, and we can say the divine nature is made up of the properties of omniscience, omnipotence, and let's say moral perfection. That, that's what makes you God. Okay, and there's only one nature that is then communicated between the three divine persons. The Father has that nature, the Son has that nature, and the Spirit has that nature. There's only one divine nature, but it's communicated between these three persons. One thing. Um, I was going to ask you, sorry, because uh, last time I had a conversation, it was actually, oh, yeah. I actually, I'll tell you the truth, yeah. I learned a lot from you. Oh, great. Yeah. But the, I actually, no, no, genuinely, I mean this, yeah. For example, like, um, Constantinople 383, 381, when we discussed Constantinople, I asked you, why is it that you accept Constantinople and not, for example, any previous uh, council? Um, considering that there were other councils that had different kind of understandings or scholars had different understandings or subor uh, subordinationism or Arianism the idea that you know, the, 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 the sun is a subordinate to the sun was, uh, was, more uh, was more prominent before 381 you said because the most recent uh, councils like Chalcedon uh, was it Chalcedon yeah? Chalcedon 451 or 52 whatever it is again I think that one, which differentiates the, uh, the God, the, uh, Jesus the God and Jesus the man. So, okay. so what I was going to ask you was that after 325, which is the Council of Nicaea, you had other councils, didn't you, before? Uh, Can you give us some of those names? Uh, Sorry, it's going completely over my head. Might be Council of Ephesus. I'm not certain. But they but I can be certain that they went ecumenical councils. So you had a myriad of small councils, yes. bishops meeting together. And they weren't understood to be ecumenical councils. Those councils that came after 325. Yep. Yes. Those councils are literally uh, went against in terms of results. Or what is the crudal understanding of Christianity? They went against the Nicene Creed. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, I would say there were some, but they, like I said again, they weren't ececumenical councils. No, but still, so they're not held as being authoritative. No, no, but how do you define an ecumenical council as okay. authoritative? So you would have the majority of bishops coming from different areas of the church. I think, I think that did happen. Not in that, no, whatever council you're trying to bring, yeah. yeah let me show them. Yes. Because I'm actually forgetting the name of it. No, please, yeah, no. Right, let me get it for you. But there were loads of councils, by the way. But the majority of people say that there were seven uh, main ecumenical councils. Yeah, let me get it for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, Newton starts, so Newton starts around the father and the son, and the son being. You love your Newton. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> because he was, he was bang on. Because he was drawing. But listen, Josh. The difference between Newton, and Einstein, Newton was drawing, was drawing a lot of his revelation from from scripture. Einstein was drawing a lot of his There's revelation a missing part. Get it off me later. Einstein, um, Einstein didn't believe in a living God. He was an pantheist. Okay. He believed okay. cause and effect. He believed in time dilation. These concepts were from the Bible. Okay. Newton was drawing from the scriptures. And but I'm you, sorry, but yeah. ultimately, but, this, sorry, you go. But I would say that he was, say, it's a father and son different in substance and so forth. It gets quite deep and fun. Yeah. But ultimately, we're talking about something that is is heavenly in nature. Okay. No, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, it is. I've yeah. got the two councils. Yeah. Okay. These are the two councils. Rimini mm -hmm. and how do you say that? Solution. Solution, yeah. So it says here, let me just read out because a, a good friend of mine he sent me some information, right? The Council of Nicaea, however, did not end the Aryan controversy, yeah? As many bishops of Eastern provinces disputed the concept of this word. How do you say it? Homo Yes, okay. So the, the, the consubstantiality of the, the father and yeah. son. Right. So it says, so then being the central term of the Nicene Creed. The, substance. the debates the among the these groups continued and resulted in numerous meetings, and no fewer than 14 further creedal formulas between 1340 and 1360, leading pa pagan observer, whatever his name is, his name is uh, Amenius Marsilianus, yeah? to comment sarcastically, the high gates were covered with galloping bishops. Uh, Emperor Constant Constantine's sons, among whom the, em uh, the empire was divided after his death, became even more embroiled with the theological disputes. So the emperor in the west constant sided with Nicaea, while the emperor in the east uh, was anti-Nicaea. Thus a pattern was being set 
for political inter uh, interference and theological issues on the part of civil rulers. Whether Arianism or Nicene Creed had the upper hand at any particular time depended upon one, uh, upon which one had the favour of the emperor. So in other words here, because when you were talking about the ecumenical councils, it's disputed historically is what I'm saying here, mm -hmm. uh, that those ecumenical councils were decisive and, and uh, most authoritative. Because what we've just read there, which I'll, I'll give you the reference later on, is that actually the authority was scattered. It wasn't as you making it out to be that the Nicene Creed was in fact the most authoritative creed. Up until 381 82, you still had massive conflict between Arians and uh, Trinitarians. Oh, so why do you choose the Nicene Creed over uh, and above the creeds that came after those creeds, which were like Rimini and stuff like that, the, 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 the Council of Rimini, which, which indicates to you and me that in fact, uh, you know, the, the Trinity isn't as we think it is. So, um, just to use that methodology, we're saying the later ones contradict the earlier one, because then I could say, well, 381, because that I promise you that the, the belief in Arianism has started to die out definitely by 381 to onwards. So I would say, well, 381... That's because of Theodosius II, isn't it? He kind of enforced it on the people, wasn't it? So, um, I'll say 381 is actually the interpretive lens that I can utilise. So, like I said, um, sorry, I haven't said this, but... Uh, Niceno Constantinopolitan uh, Constantin Creed, um, formulated in 381, doesn't contradict the earlier creed, Excellent. the earlier ecumenical creed, and so that creed can be the one that I put my. See, I, I find my, this really difficult to yeah. understand because here there's one aspect of Christianity which you're willing to understand and believe in as it is, which is the Trinity. But there are other aspects of Christianity, so you're really picking and choosing. Oh, not at all. But what you have to understand is um, number one, areas. So Arianism wasn't actually Unitarian belief because they did actually hold to... Um, they believed in subordinationism, isn't it? Yes, so they just, they believed that um, Christ was homo, homo usius. It's on homo, ho, um, homi, or homo usius. So it's a bit different, it just has an I in the middle. So they believed that Christ was um, of a similar nature to the Father. Doesn't it just but he wasn't, one second, yeah, sorry. he wasn't of the same nature. And yes. so the argument was, by Athanasius and, and um, the, the people who were formulating the Doctrine of Trinity, that the Father and Son were, um, um, were of the same essence. Arius was saying that they're different essence, they're of a different essence. Isn't it just, but it wasn't a Unitarian belief. Isn't it just easier to yeah. say that God is one and that Jesus is not God? Isn't that just much more... Doesn't, oh, it, doesn't okay. it demystify it? The no, no, I don't think it demystifies it. But then you have to say, well, number one, what would God do when he um, gives us a revelation? Would he give us a revelation that is just clear cut? We have, we don't have to do anything at all. I think, that's, I think that's what he would do. Yeah. I don't think so. Why? Because number one, <laughs> why not? Number one, it is only intelligent people. No, 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 I think that's how God. No, no, no. I, I, I tell you how God does speak. It's through dreams and through revel through dreams and visions. He is spirit. So God will have to, so, to speak in a riddle or, or dark speech to communicate to reveal what's in the heart. Because that's what He's interested well, in. He has the heart. He has to speak straightforwardly. So that's why you'll find that. No, no, he doesn't. Not, with, not, not always in the Bible. The riddles in, in, in many different yeah, okay, ways. Yeah, what's yeah, 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 need to be interpreted. Yeah, what's that to be? Revelation, interpretation, and the application. If, for example, crucifixion. Was any, ambigu uh, was any ambiguous, then people would just have different uh, understandings of the but, but a lot of people do. I mean, you, you could say, if you go to someone like Marcus Paul, who's passed away, he would say that... Um, uh, that makes religion just like... No, 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 actually crucifixion, resurrection. He would say that the resurrection... I mean, God, God, God does speak to children in a childlike way. And, and we need that childlike faith to come to it. He yeah. opposes the pride, he gives grace to the Yeah, I don't have a problem yeah. with that. But I think, and I understand that, I believe that there is a prior probability or high prior probability that if God is going to, um, you know, give a revelation to a people group or to the world, he would do it in such a way that we actually have to invest ourselves in understanding yes, the Ten God. Commandments can so, be seen in ten different ways. You'd have a hundred. Yeah, but there's a difference between a commandment and a theological doctrine. Yeah, okay. So a commandment the, is saying the that Trinity, you must do this. If the, the Trinity, Trinity is not a, a commandment. Yeah, I'm with you. But it's a the, theological doctrine. That doctrine is understood in, as you know, a multiplicity of different ways. My question is, how could that be the case, and why should that be the case? It, well, it's first, number one, you have to say our subject is going to determine how we understand it. So the subject that we are trying to understand is God. So obviously there's going to be things, things which will be difficult to understand. Not to say that they will be impossible to understand, fact, but they will be difficult to understand. Says, so, so, understand. so I'm saying, yeah, so... Yeah. I, get, I get so, that point. But I'm saying the centerpiece of Christianity here with the Trinity mm -hmm. is 
a difficult to understand or mysterious paradoxical concept. No, I, I, I just think so for, for the position. You have to yeah. see where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. yeah? You're a Christian. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Guessing. I agree. That's what I was just saying to Josh. So, you know, we're, we're coming across not me and him, but, but a lot of leading Christian theologians at the moment are coming across as fruitcakes to the outside world, and that's my concern, Josh. Not you. Yeah. So uh, you guys are coming to me. Let me just be straightforward. Be, be, be. You guys will come to me and say, look, believe in the Trinity. I believe in one God and Jesus was the Messiah and the Prophet. What makes more sense? My version makes more sense. Your version makes less sense. Why should I go from something which makes sense to something which doesn't make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? So from your perspective, you're telling me to believe in something ambiguous. We know from, we know from philosophy, we know from mathematics that that, from Occam's razor even, right? Occam's razor is the idea that if um, basically, go back to the most simple yeah, so explanation. Yeah. The most simple explanation is that you have one creator creating the universe and that he sent messengers to communicate the message that he wants to send. That's what we believe in. I, Why should yeah. we go to a more si the most say, simplistic okay. explanation? I would say to a more complicated paradoxical I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. I would hold it. I would think that it so is more simple. What, how would you convince me that Christianity is that's true? Why I don't hold through the it. language of the Spirit. The language. Well, I, don't, I think I don't, it has to be more than that. Which is language. dreams. I think it has to be more. Well, that's how lots of Muslims have been converted in their dreams. That's fine, but they're, they're receiving dreams of Jesus. What about if the devil came to you in their dream? I mean, I'm not agreeing with what you're saying. Okay. But, um, By the way, a lot of. Wait this way. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I go back dreams? to my point? Those yeah. I've seen videos of people that have had dreams about the Prophet Muhammad and the Kabul Muslim. I mean, it works both ways. Yeah, that's why I don't, I don't yeah. hold to that. Yeah. So, or as, as a but successful it's, it, But it's the language of the spirit, Joshua. How could you convince me that Christianity is true? Because it speaks okay. a thousand words. So, okay. The same um, way the devil can, 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 can speak through, through dream, dreams and visions. Yes, I agree. Like diviners, psychics. I agree. Okay. So, God's um, true prophets, God's false Convince me. Okay. So, <laughs> I would say, um, how I would convince you about the truth of Christianity would be not actually about the Trinity. It's because at the heart of Christianity is the resurrection. Okay. So if the resurrection occurred, then Christianity is true. Even if we can't understand the Trinity. Yeah, but then you're going to depend You would have to depend upon external things like history, yeah? Oh, yes, of course. And if we're going to throw away science, we might as well throw away history. Why? Because what's stronger, science different. or history? I don't throw away science. No, okay, we don't throw away science. But what you're yeah. saying is that we said before that the, 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 the epistemological roots of truth can't be using science. So why should we say? No, because no, that's right. the thing. This I don't think I said that. No, no. I didn't say that. No, what I'm saying is, yeah, okay. we both agreed that science cannot pr produce ultimate truth. We all agree with that, yeah? History, likewise, cannot produce ultimate truth. It's a, si it's a social science. In fact, it's weaker than science. But you're saying, let's use something which is actually, yeah, it's a social science. Okay, so so from that perspective, yeah. you're saying, let's, if, the, if your logical precept is, if the, the resurrection is true, therefore, uh, Christianity is true. true yeah. What I'm saying is that if you're saying that science, which is lower, uh, which is stronger than history, should not be used ultimately to, to find out what's true and false, what I'm saying is uh, then history shouldn't be used either. Okay, way. okay, I disagree with you. I think I would I would say what my position was was that science doesn't give us absolute truth. Yeah. Okay? Same thing can with give us, no, it can give us certain truths. Same thing with history. But it doesn't give us absolute truth. Same thing with so history. yeah, so the resurrection or an event occurring in the past isn't an absolute truth. No. If, so it's not an absolute truth. It's, well, okay. it's, it's, it's historical. Yes. And it's something historical is not absolute. Absolutely. So yeah, there you go. So but you can't then, be sure but, that the resurrection occurred. No, but then you can't be sure about anything. You can't be sure that, let's say, Prophet Muhammad was uh, visited by Jibreel and given the Quran. No. What but I'm saying is if you use the historical approach as your epistemological route to truth, yes, No, but I don't. I'm saying I utilize it. If I'm doing history, I utilize the historical methodology. Yes, yes. So I'm saying if we're going to speak about the resurrection, we have to so, utilize so, the historical no, but, methodology. No, we don't need to. I, 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 let's, what? Turn, Sorry, how would you a postmodern historian? Yeah? Or fake, uh, I or don't. Fake. Postmodernism is self defeated. Oh, so, right. I'm just pretend. Okay, it's impossible just pretend. to be a postmodernist. Okay, yeah. I agree with that. But let's, yeah. just, let's just say I'm someone who has a high skepticism to the historical approach, especially in the ancient period. You have to understand, me and you both believe in Jesus. But there are historians out there who are well qualified and good, well, uh, very credited that don't actually even believe he existed. Okay, now I'm not saying Oof. that. No, hold on. Okay. I'm not Lots saying that say they're the right. Holocaust never happened. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying that these guys are right. They're wrong. We believe that because of the biblical the Quranic discourse. What I'm saying is that you cannot impose a historical understanding or say that history can prove that the resurrection happened when some historians are actually even disputing whether Jesus existed or not. Can you see okay, the, so can you, can okay. you see the jump there? The so, jump. Okay. But I would say 
99% of historians or the respected historians who are studying. Not 99, not 99. That's, that's, not, I would no, say, not, to, not 99. I would say to you, it is a fringe belief that Jesus didn't uh, um, exist. I don't, so I you have people like, let's say, Richard Carrier and Rob Price. They are not. I, I agree so with no, you. So even Bart Ehrman himself, one second, Bart Ehrman himself yeah. said, no respected um, uh, uh, New Testament historian who's working in any respected university I agree with him. would hold to Jesus not existing. So I'm saying it is not even, yeah. uh, it's not an argument. I, can't, I wouldn't even no, go no, down no, that yeah, part. Fair enough, yeah. but what I'm saying is that histo history as a, so a, socio, uh, mm -hmm. like a social science, mm -hmm. is, I'm, saying, I'm putting forward that it's a social science. The social science by, in, uh, by their nature attempt to mimic science. They attempt to mimic science in an, in an attempt to try and produce something which is as strong as science. So for that reason, it will never be as strong as science. Now what we've said is that even science, no matter how strong it is, it's not strong enough to come to objective or certain truths. What you're saying is let's get something I, I, weaker than science, no, 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 which no, no, is no. history. I, I said to you that I work with probabilities. Yes. I say it's significantly probable that Jesus of Nazareth was resurrected okay. from the dead. What I'm saying to you and is... So, so I'm not saying you can't historically hold to a certainty. Yes. But you have to say that. I hold to it. So is that, is that your only way that you would to say you've got a Muslim in front of you? Yeah? Mm -hmm. our, our narrative is mm -hmm. They didn't kill him, they didn't crucify him, but it was made to appear like that. In other words, some some Mufassir, some uh, exegetes, they say actually Jesus wasn't killed. Either. He wasn't crucified. What happened was that there was someone who, who looked like him, who had the appearance of Jesus Christ, who was crucified. Yeah? What's your position? Just, yeah, just I, so I know. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. My position is that either happened, or that he just wasn't killed and crucified. We all, all Muslims agree that he was not killed. Can we just have a short conversation? So I would say, so I would say um, that I um, I have a problem with that. Why? Because let's say we were to hold to. You can't disprove to, it, though. Of course, I can't disprove anything. No, you can disprove things. Of course, you can. You can't. Okay, I'll, I'll disprove something in front of you right now. Demonstration. Okay, here we go. I disprove. I can disprove that you have no wings on your body. No. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No. What do you mean by wings? Uh, the, the like of which birds have. I can say that you're, I can, you're hallucinating. I, can I, can disprove, I don't have wings. I can disprove the fact that there are, you know, uh, uh, Tyrannosaurus rexes uh, here. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, I no. Maybe, because, oh, maybe the wrong. No, no, I'm saying that. <laughs> no, but I'm saying One that. One of them is right here. Know, <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs in the park, according to my theory. Right. According to your theory, they've gone a long, long time ago. Okay, John. okay. okay. Um, I do, the reason why I'm disputing that, obviously I don't hold to there being dinosaurs or me having wings, but you have to qualify what you're saying. You're saying that it's extremely improbable that I have wings. Because no, you can't I say be you certain. Can't have it. Do you know the you know the reason why you can't be certain? Why? It's because you yourself can't be certain that I even exist. No, okay, look. So I'm saying no, no so what, I, what me I'm personally saying, yeah. I use the word certainty. Mm -hmm. Philosophically, having a presupposition that I'm a sentient being, I'm a rational being, uh, and that what I see is actually. But why should you hold to you being a rational being? No, that's philosophically you're right. That's a question. But that's what I'm saying. So yeah, no, I'm saying the right. probability yes. is so low yes, yes, that yes, I don't exactly. exist. So I so you have avoid probability reasoning. Mm -hmm. well, just having to I think it's, 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 it's a bit weird now. Is, just having to so why don't you believe Jesus died on the cross? What evidence at all? Okay. Is there any evidence? Is there any evidence of him not dying on the cross? I'll tell you why. Okay, The reason why. Why would you want to refuse it? Is that interesting? I know why. Okay, I'll tell you first one. The reason why is the same reason why I don't believe in human evolution and why you don't believe in human evolution. Right? The reason why you don't believe in human evolution, and I don't believe in human evolution, is because we have a text which claims to be from God, which we are convinced by, which claims otherwise. Now, I believe that the Quran is a text that the authorship of which is from God. It puts forward challenges and it, make, it has a verification method of, of uh, making it clear that it is from God. So from that perspective, I've been convinced epistemologically. The Quran has makes it, makes it clear in more than one verse that, God, uh, did, uh, that Jesus Christ was not killed and that he was not crucified. So, and that it was made to appear to people that he was. The fact that now you can bring evidences to show that he was crucified would only do as much as actually reinforcing the third part of the ayah, which is that it was made to, it was made to uh, appear so, I, it made to appear in your mind and other Christian people's minds that Jesus was in fact crucified and resurrected. Do, do you want me to just say something? Why? Why would what, you want can to I, hold can I just jump, so Can I just jump into that? Yeah, just to go qualify, on. just to comment yeah. on your point. I believe that you, you go into a dilemma there. Go ahead, if you say that, okay, um, 
it appeared to um, us that you know, Jesus did, was crucified. Yeah. He, he was his. No, 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 whoever. Okay, it yeah. appears that he did. Yeah, of course. Then you have to say that Allah is able to deceive. And if that means that Allah is able to deceive, he cannot be morally perfect. Okay, but well, hold on. Because Let's deception go. is a moral no, imperfection. No. Let me tell you something. So right? tell me, please. Is God able to deceive? Absolutely. We say he is able to deceive. That's can't not be morally perfect. perfect. No, no, hold on. Is God able to deceive? He's able to deceive whoever he wants. That's not a problem for God, yeah? Really? Why? Well, you say he's not able to do it. Yes. It's a logical impossibility. So, so, so for you, God is not able the to deceive. He's in strong it's delusions. Logical, no, what's it? It's logically impossible. No. What we're saying, I, I maintain that it's possible for God it's, to deceive. Okay. Do, do you want me to tell you? No, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'll let you say no, that. Because no. now what you've done is. In logic, you've, you've, you've loaded your presupposition why? with... No, I'll tell you why. Because you're what you've done is you have your own set understanding of what uh, of what moral perfection is. Okay, what is moral and perfection? For you, your what, understanding... What is moral perfection? This is a cyclical then? argument. Let me tell you why it's a cyclical okay, tell me. argument. Yes. A cyclical argument is when you use something to prove something else. So if I, can't, if I say this is... What colour is this? You say it's grey. Why is this grey? I say because it's grey. No, that's, no, no that's, not, that's not cyclical argument. That is a cyclical cyclical argument. argument. Cyclical argument is when I'm trying to prove something by utilising itself yeah, to prove it. Okay, so, so th that's exactly it's like, it's like you, yeah. right, right. So I'm saying if I was yeah, to use so the I, Bible to prove the Bible, yeah, use the Quran exactly, to prove the Bible. Exactly, that's, that's what, so, that, yeah, exactly. You're, so, you're doing a cyclical But you're, I'm, I'm let not... Let me tell you what you are. Let me tell you why you are. Moral perfection for you is understood through a biblical lens. It cannot be understood. No, 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 it's not. How is it understood? Perfect being theology. When well, we come, no, hold on. How, so, do you, how do you know no, what's, so we, what's perfect? What's so perfect? We, no, one second. Yeah. If we know that it makes a being lesser to have What's it, lesser? What's lesser? So let's say if I was to rape someone. No, no, no. Hold on. Well, can I give an example? Yeah. It's yeah. a horrible thing. Yeah. Let's say I was to rape someone or I was to kill someone. Okay. I would say that is a moral imperfection. When you got a big guy like that, say talk about rape and uh, God forbid. Murder. I'm, not, I'm not that type of person. <laughs> in the that. park. I'll never do that. Yeah, I know you would. But I'm just saying that we would say that person is morally imperfect. If I gave to you no, Hitler, no, no, one no, second, no. give me an example. Yes, yes. If I gave to you Hitler there, no one will say he was a morally perfect being. No, but hold on, let me just say So, that. So yeah. we can understand, we have an understanding what moral I, I, perfection no, no, hold is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just, yeah. let me challenge that directly. Okay, yeah. please challenge it. Yeah, almost any philosopher that you go to, from an atheistic perspective or postmodern perspective, will tell you that morals as a construct are exactly that, they're a construct. So in other words, there is no neuroscientific way of establishing a morality outside of religion. As a Christian, as a Muslim. Well, God, the Bible says God set eternity within our hearts. Yes, I'm with you, but as a Christian, as a Muslim, we are informed by the Christian or the Muslim here. We're gonna talk about paradise. narratives. Yeah? That's what basically, oh, that's how we know what good and bad is. I know what good and bad is from the Quran. You know what good and bad is from the Bible. No, I can say it. So you don't believe you can, No, no, you can use reason alone. Are we ready? How do you have, show me how, show me how. So, so now I want you to sh show me using any neuroscientific method, no, I using don't. reason, using uh, logic, using gem. science, how it could be the case that you can derive something which is morally objective without using uh, basically the idea that there's an all a knowing or wise entity that can disseminate that information. How do you do that? So I would say that we can. Sorry, it's going to get a little bit technical. Go ahead. Okay, but the first you know thing, um, I will never use nor, um, neuroscientific methodology. So what would you it's use? Then morality is. We're well, taking away religion. One second. Morality is a philosophical concept. Okay. It falls under the, the subcategory of ethics. Okay. So there are some philosophers who put forward objective, objective moral theories. They say how morality yeah, I, can be grounded. Well, they're, not they're not. They're not in, in the in the grand scheme no, so of things. They're not so, seen as no, having. No. Uh, so even like, even party. if I didn't know anything. So how do you do it? One second. Even if I if I didn't know anything about the Bible, yes. anything about any religious Jay, text, Jay. Right. the the Quran or anything. But I'm talking about objective. One morality. second. One second. Objective. Morality. One second. Yeah. If I was to put every religious text aside, can you tell me? that I would not understand that paedophilia is incorrect. Yes. That there can be any... No, no, no. What's it? No, no, no. So me raping a little girl, yes. you're saying to me that there can be any possible situation yeah. where that can be right. I'm saying that if... Look, look into no, the No, what's it? Let me ask you. Answer my, no, me can ask it ever be no. right? No, no. Can, can it ever yeah. be right? From our perspective, no, yeah? However... But, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't need a religious no, text no, to come to no, that. No, no, hold on. No. Speak to you, anyone. Hold on, hold on. Please, please. Yeah. And now you've asked the question. So I'm speaking to you. Let me answer it, yeah? yeah? What I'm saying is that, look, the, the, the term objective morality has very strong philosophical connotations. It means that which can be proven without okay, using subjective experience or opinion to inform it. Jesus! Uh, that's, we that's, that's like the definition of objective, uh, a subjective experience. Man, you you get what I'm saying? What I'm saying, yes, I am saying that like paedophilia, I'm saying that paedophilia, rape, 
all of those but things cannot be proven objectively as mora morally wrong without Islam. having religion to inform them. That's my point. When we look and show me how, because even if there's no, there's there's a person that you can find. One second. Like my example again. You can you can go to a person who has no religious background and say to them, do you think child rape? One second. Is child rape wrong? But that's subjective. No, because no, no, because how you can of course it's how you can know if something's objective or not is to sorry this is a difficult terminology can this thing be true in any possible world in any possible situation one second in any possible situation that i could find any how could you prove one second one second any possible situation that there could be or how the world could have been that there could be a situation where child paedophilia is correct. Well, I'm saying the majority, I'm saying the majority yeah. opinion will be objective. No, objectively, that can never. So we can then come to that. Now you've used democratic reasoning. No, no, no. See, look, you have to, you have to be consistent with your methodology. Yeah, you said the majority of people will say no. Yeah, that's called a democratic reasoning. Now, if you if you talk about democratic so, reasoning, I can refer back to 1933 in, in Germany paradise. and say actually the majority pure of Germans did in fact vote for Hitler, who was an anti-Semite. Who took, we just move a little. Yeah, 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 you support that in the Quran. So here, your reasoning can you give me references in the Quran? That will say whatever you desire is in paradise. Yeah, that one says that's the. So where did you get that idea from? Here. Where did you find out? Did you, you get it? It's the wrong position. By the way, there's nobody, there's nobody in, in the history of philosophy that I know of, and unless we talk about theories of consequentialism or theories of like these things, there's no one who actually maintains the position that you're maintaining. Oh yes. Give me an example of Richard someone. Swinburne. What does he say? Richard Swinburne. He's a Christian, funny enough. No, no, no. But I'm it was no, no. I'll give you an example. He's a Christian philosopher, um, but he holds to morality not being grounded in God. So let's give you an example. Let's say William Lane Craig. Yes. He believes morality is grounded in God. Swinburne will completely disagree with him and actually say no. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Morality I'm, itself. I'm, I'm saying prove it. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about objective. So, listen. So I'm talking way, about objective. Yeah. Listen. I'm talking about objective morality. Mm -hmm. I'm saying objective morality. Yeah. Of any sorts. My claim to you today. It's a complete sociological construct. Yes? Yeah. Unless you have someone, okay, who is able to put it through any kind of method, a scientific method, a neuroscientific method, a logical method, a mathematical method, it will always remain like that. Who, who agrees with me? Most atheists agree with me. Uh, Derrida agrees with me. Jacques Derrida agrees with me. Nietzsche agrees with me. Uh, you know, Bertrand Russell agree, agrees with me. Why? Even, even Sam Harris, who's, who kind of wrote the moral landscape and these kind of things, and the footnote in the end of his book, the moral landscape. He writes exactly that. He says that there is no neuroscientific way of finding out. Uh, I already said to you, I wouldn't utilize neuroscience. Now, what I'm saying is, whatever you utilize, there's no. What I'm saying is, whatever you utilize, there is no way of establishing or affirming a objective morality of any sort, unless you have a unless you have religion to inform. Okay, can I ask you, why would that be so with religion? Because religion implies that you have an all-knowing, sentient, all-wise entity that cannot be wrong. Yeah, so in all aspects, whether it be sociologi sociological, psychological or otherwise, his word or this entity's word will be the absolute word. But how would you know that that entity exists? That's, we go through a logical method. No, so we saying, as Muslims, we have two or three different aspects, but that's a different discussion. No, 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 no it's not. Because okay, she, looks, she wants you, to answer it. Yeah, we, we, we answer it in the By the way, I do hold to consequences. I mean, it might come across that uh, an argument atheist with I'm not. But I just want to understand your reasoning. Yeah. My reasoning is that you can, uh, we believe that God has instilled within human beings something called the predisposition. That's number one. So God's existence for the Muslims is that. But why do you believe? How can we trust that that is so? Okay, so I'm telling you that's actually something you can uh, experiment. So in 2011, the Oxford Anthropological Society, they conducted a study which actually showed that uh, they went to I don't know how many different countries, examined children and they said that children are born with a predisposition to believe in God. No, that's not true. No, the, the position is... And the, and the, and the person who... Um, it is true. That, that's not true. The position when it comes to... Um, they said that they, they believe in a higher power of some sort. That's exactly no. what they said. No, yes, yes, yes. How do you know it's not true? So what they... What those, studies, no, what those studies are based on is the existence of a hyperactive, um, protected um, system. So let's say you were to look at the trees, okay? okay? And you, one second, a child would think that there is, and you heard some rustles in the, in, uh, by the trees, you would think that it's a human, or you think that it's some person. Yeah. 
So what people have extrapolated from that is that we have something inbuilt in us yes. to personify things. The person who's but in charge of that study's name is I think Justin Barrett or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So what he said... He's a Christian, but... No, no, yeah, he might be a Christian, sorry. No, he, he might be a Christian, he might be anything, but the, the point I'm making is, aside from that... No, but they would he, say they would say that you can't come to that conclusion. The book that he wrote... We can have, the yeah. book that he wrote, he said that you can come to a, a polytheistic conclusion, you can come to a monotheistic conclusion. But however, he said that you always have the idea that you believe in the higher power. So I'm saying that you're asking how can I prove the predisposition. I'm saying that there is evidence from an external source which happens to be the studies that are done in 2011. Yeah, but that doesn't mean. However, that, there's another one. Second, one second, that's one second. That's one second. <laughs> one second. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't prove your point because the person that put that predis predisposition within us, or yeah, the, the being that um, you know hard hardwired us in that way yes, to yes. have that predisposition. Yes, yes could be a god that is not um, held within Islam or held within any other yeah, yeah, I say, I say so I'm, No, so I'm saying it could be an evil god. No, but the word so evil doesn't, doesn't, doesn't exist. No, hold on. The word evil can you prove evil exists? Objective evil itself? Yes, yes. objective. Okay, I would say you can't really... Thank you. you. That's what, my whole point. No, what is that evil? That was actually no, my whole point. Saying, what does evil mean? No, okay, thank, thank you. you. So, so, that, that was, so evil so, is that so Josh, good? Josh, yeah. What you've done here is you've literally just come to what I've just said in the beginning. You can't prove that evil exists objectively. Therefore, someone who says that pedophilia or killing someone or rape or, or, or massacring or any of those bad things is objectively bad is not entitled to do so philosophically. Just because you can't prove something doesn't mean that thing does not in itself. Yeah, right, okay, I agree. So even agree. if you can't prove that agree. evil doesn't agree. exist, so no, no. doesn't so mean evil doesn't no, no, exist. No, that's good. Now go back to so your original you argument. Your original you argument, which was a philosophical one, was, was saying that, okay, if the God of the Quran is in fact, uh, has the ability to plot or deceive. And by the way, one of his names is not the deceiver. I, I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm just, just making that clear. Has God, has God got the ability to deceive? My answer to that would be, if it's appropriate and it fits his majesty, he could do it. If it's not appropriate and it doesn't fit his majesty, he wouldn't do it. So for example, so, let me give you an example, right? A, a straightforward example. Mm -hmm. If you have someone who's a pedophile, mm -hmm. he's now looking at the kids in the playground, yes? And he wants to choose his prey. He's looking, looking, looking. Now, he goes and he tries to find one of the girls, yeah? One of the young boys. However, so he asks one of his pedophile friends and his pedophile friend says, no, go to that playground, not that playground. All right. So what has happened here is that he's been deceived because this, say his pedophile friend is actually a police officer or someone who cares for the children. He's deceived that guy to go somewhere else and do something else. In the context of him going to do some bad acts, that's seen as something which is praiseworthy. No one would say that his deceiving of that pedophile is a bad thing. Okay. So what I'm saying is that yeah. God would only... So it has God got the ability to deceive. God has the ability to deceive where it's appropriate in context. Okay, so can I, can I tell me? I, I don't think that analogy... One of his names is not the deceiver. One second. Oh, I did say it was, yeah, but I'm just, just making it I clear. don't think that analogy actually fits. Why? Because when you're using that analogy, you're talking about a person, okay? And we're talking about God, who's an omnipotent being. Who can perform any action? Yeah. So, out of all the options which God could have chose, He yeah. chose to deceive when He could have chose to maybe do something else. So God does. So, so why would He do that? No, no, when He okay, one second, one second, second, when He's able to go and stop. So, so because yeah. I'm saying, I, no, you know, like, yeah. God, God could have just, you no, know, it's it's yeah. so with that guy, who, you know, was supposed to, you know, he got deceived and he went to, he wasn't going to go and, um, you know, perform like that act here. Yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't maybe I couldn't have stopped him maybe without deceiving. Him. But God, if he was in that situation, yeah. could have stopped yeah. him without so, using okay. deception. Let me tell you so something. my example is yes, so, why, so why, why I think so? up is that God could have done something else you, instead of deceiving. Why, why so why would he deceive? No, see, so the thing is, there's an implied um, there's a presupposition in your question, which must be exposed. Your implied presupposition, yeah. which has just been disproven, and you have to be fair about it. Why? Is, let me tell you what it is. Yeah. Your implied presupposition is that actually it's a bad thing to deceive at all times. That's your implied presupposition. This cannot be proven. Therefore, your whole contention is a non-provable contention. So when you say that, why did God do this or why did God do that? So long as it fits his majesty and so long as it's appropriate for him to do so and it doesn't contradict his other attributes. Actually, no, it shouldn't be an issue. I would say I'll, I'll qualify what you're saying. I don't agree with you. It's wrong to deceive all times if you are on the... No, one second. Why? It's why? wrong why? to deceive at all times. that precept? Now, can I tell you why? It's not wrong maybe to, for me to deceive at all times if I can maybe save a life. No, but why is it wrong? One second. I can maybe save a life by deceiving. 
so I've done something good there. But if I have the ability to perform any action which an omnipotent being yes. can, no, no, hold it on, will on. then. No, that's a contradiction, bro. You can't, you can't move on. Sorry, stop, stop, stop. You, right now, what you just said mm -hmm. is, is totally contradictory. No. I have to, I have to hold you. Why? On. Tell me what? Because before you, I said, can God deceive? You said no. Right now, you just said that God can perform any action. Okay, now can I tell you why? What do you mean by action? An action is something which is not Josh. logical. One second, no, understand what I mean. Because this is actually what philosophers go to. When you say God can perform any action, you then have to say, qualify what you mean by action. Something that's logically impossible is not an action. So when I say, can God, you know, uh, create a stone that's too heavy for him to lift? Of course God can't do that because that's not an action in itself. But yet God, so it's, God, yet, yet God can become a man. That's the definition. No, 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 sorry, man. No, no, no you, please you, don't. You've no, no, you said it yourself. If you want to, we can go into that issue. <laughs> but it's not that issue. Creating a stone that is too heavy for him to lift. Creating a married bachelor. I'm literally talking about nothing. So that action okay. can't be performed. Right, okay. When I say God can perform any action, that's anything that's logically possible. Yeah, so is, is, why is it logically impossible for God to decide to deceive a certain people? Why? Because if it, the reason why it's logically impossible is it's because. Not, it's not logically impossible. So, can, I, can I say something? The reason why it's logically impossible is because, like I said, it goes against God's moral yes. perfection. No, but that perfection so, is defined by the biblical discourse. Sorry, not biblical. Yeah, so but, where is it defined? One second. You would have an understanding of moral perfection. Yes. Where, where, where? Would we would we share okay. some understanding of morality? Only from what's uh, what's um, what is concurrent from come both from, of our scriptures. No, but even though we come from two no, different. No, we wouldn't. Really? Yeah. Look how many different concepts I've got. Here. So I'm saying, let's say a biblical, uh, sorry, a scriptural text endorsed rape or endorse, you know, pedophilia or something like that. Yeah. Not saying any of our texts do that. But let's say, Greek. would you then say, Josh, you're fine to believe that because that's your text? Or would you say, Josh, that's actually a false text because it's holding to something which is immoral? No, no, I wouldn't say it's a false text. Because but it's, it's, it's telling me to perform an immoral act. No, but that's not a, it's not a philosophical really? argument. Why? Because I'd have to prove philosophically away from religion that these things are objectively wrong first, okay. which is impossible to But we would share that it is yeah, wrong. Subjectively. Yeah, but we, subjectively. we would share. Subjectively. But we would share. Yeah, that we would share that it's wrong to um, perform the action. To objectively, we would say that. Okay. We, we, we are my opinion, your opinion. Yeah. No, I think it's a bit more than what is it? Because an opinion can change. Yeah. So I could change my opinion tomorrow and say, oh, now I feel so opinion, opinion is wrong. No. Right. So what, you're, you're making an emotional yes. argument without really. using logic. How, how is it an emotional argument? Because an emotional argument is one which is devoid of logical reasoning. Why is it devoid of logical reasoning? Because how can you prove objectively that any action is wrong without using religion? Like I said to you, um, you can't utilize the term proof. Like I said before, so you can't. No, you, no, because you're using the wrong terminology. So what would you, you say? You can't prove anything. I can only say that it's significantly probable how, how? that how can you say rape is a wrong thing. How can you say it's one Because from the evidence that we have that we can bring about, we know that rape what has. What so let's say rape has dire consequences. So no, no. Now you you have another presupposition, no, which is the liberal. No, hold on. Now you have a yes, yes, sorry, sorry, liberal sorry. presupposition, which is that so long as you can you can do whatever you want, so long as you don't harm anyone else. Yeah, you said it has consequences on the person, yeah, on the person you're raping. Who cares if it has consequences on the person you're raping? Sure from an objective. Sure. No, hold on. Yeah. Now, I, that was my point. Let me ask you a question. Why is it wrong to hurt someone? Why is it wrong to hurt someone? Yeah. Um, How can you prove it objectively? Because I don't have a right to hurt, hurt that person. How, 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 do you, how, do, how can you prove that? What do you mean? How, how can you prove that you don't have a right to hurt anyone? Because maybe we can say that someone has a right to perform an action. How can you prove that anyone has One a right? One second. We have. I might have a right that to perform an action. Like Muhammad, doesn't it? How old was Muhammad? I'm not with him, so a lot of people think. No, no, so, so, yeah. so, no, you're not with him. So, um, um, uh, can you say what you're saying again? How can you prove that it's wrong? How can you prove that, it's, uh, that anyone has rights? Okay, so I would say maybe a way that we can put forward a mechanism to do that no. is to say, <coughs> I don't have a right to a person because maybe I'm not the source of being of that person. So I'll give an example. It, let's say, um, you know, I saw a child doing something wrong and I went and What's took wrong? that... One second. Just go with me for a second. Okay. So you can have my example. I went and saw a child, you know, stealing something yeah. and that wasn't his or doing something that was bad. And I went and started beating that child. Okay? I would be seen as performed the wrong action. Because I, 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 one second, I don't have the right to discipline that child. One second, I don't have the right to discipline that child because I'm not the source of its being. 
But let's say it was the parents who went to saw the child performing that action. They would have the right to maybe discipline their child. I don't have the right. I think, philo I think philosophically you're, you're all over the place. Why am I sorry? Tell, tell me the reason. Um, okay, what I just said. Show me that's logically yeah. incoherent, and then you'll then you'll would have proved you, you have so many presuppositions that aren't substantiated. Okay, show me my like presuppositions. Kind of show things. me my presuppositions. No, now we're talking, we're starting from a basis that there's no such thing as right and wrong. Why do you say that? No, that's what we're doing. Because you can't you can't assume the existence of something. Yeah? Sorry, we're not assuming the existence of something to prove it. Like we can't we can't assume the existence of evil to prove evil. Yeah, we're trying to prove evil as an objective morality without using evil. But the problem is, if you ground... How can you do that? Let's say, let's say if you ground that in God, yeah. um, you do have a problem because morality becomes arbitrary. It really becomes arbitrary. Because whatever God commands, and I know this is the new thought for a dilemma, but it is actually a true dilemma. If God did command to do something, then it becomes right in itself. And so that issue that I have with deception, because God performed that action, it's not wrong. Ah, and that's the we, issue. We believe, in, we believe in that, by the way. But then morality becomes arbitrary. Why does it become arbitrary? Because God could have, you know, um, decided anything could be right. Rape is right, or yeah. pedophilia is right. No, but hold on. But then, no, hold on. then morality no, no, no. itself is yeah. arbitrary. No, no, no. So, so God, morality is the result of God's prohibitions and his commands. So basically what God makes good is good, and what God makes bad is bad. There is no separation between what God has made right and what is right. From our then, then you have that problem I said with morality being arbitrary. I know, God, I know it's God a problem with Christianity, it's not a problem in Islam. Why is not? Tell me the reason why. Yeah. The reason why it's not a problem in Islam. I do have to go to the okay, that's good. Let's just do this. It's because God creates actions. So, in the Quran, it says that God creates humans act, every action. Every action that's, that's in this earth is created by God. What do you mean by that? The actions that we perform are God's actions. So you don't have a free will choice in what you do? No, we have free will choice at the same time. How does that work? So you have both of them operating at the same time. How? In a way that God knows best. Yeah, I'm not can, can God do it? No, no? I'm not, that's not my question. No, but my, how does it work? No, because how? for me, it just seems nonsensical what you just said. Okay, no, but that, it seems nonsensical. It doesn't mean just because something seems nonsensical that it is okay, nonsensical. Okay, so show me how it's not. Nonsensical. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the question of how free will and determinism works at the same time is a question that Muslims or Christians or Jews or anybody will not, I personally believe you cannot know the mechanisms of it. Why? It's just certain things you don't know the mechanisms of. If I ask you why is it the case that on a quantum level you have particles that are in two places at the same time and on a macro level you have... Can I, show, can I just so tell you? So what I'm saying is, my question to you is, can God create a system whereby he allows determinism to take place and free will to take place at the same time. You could do that. Show it. Tell so, me okay. how then. No, no. Because, okay, one so second, can, on, I, can I just say your point? No, hold on. You're, you're, you're Jason, exactly Jason, now. Jason. No, Josh. Right, sorry, sorry. You're, you're exactly all over the place. No, no, hold on. Because if I, I can utilize your position and say the same thing for Trinitarianism, no, no, I can say, no, I can say, I don't know how the Trinity works, right, but right. God could do it. I'm happy you said that. So, no, tell me on. then how it works. Well, let me tell you first yeah. of all why it's different from Trinitarianism. Tell, tell me. Yeah? Trinitarian, Trinitarianism is a description of God, mm -hmm. whereas what we believe is Qadr and free will is a description of what God does. Mm -hmm. So what God does, we've already said that the only things that is the only things that God wouldn't do are those things which are against His nature. One, all those things which are logically implausible. Two, like married bachelor. Now this third thing category of things we don't know how the mechanisms of which work are not included in A or B. So logic, yes, yes. So, so if I say, if I say, yeah. can God create a mechanism whereby He allows determinism to exist and free will to exist at yeah. the same time? If you say yes, He can, then that's end no, the discussion. No, no so I would, I would say because that I, if you say, if you I'll say, I'll say I'll, yes. let me say something. Sorry, if you say that, okay, the fact that I don't understand that God allows for human beings to have free will and for Him to have created the actions and put it into action Himself and written it and all these kind of things, I don't understand how it works. Therefore, it is. Not true. No. That's in logical What's terms. Well, hold on. That's in logical terms called an argument. It's called um, it's called the fallacy of incredulity, which means that just because something is amazing to someone, they don't un comprehend it. It doesn't mean that it's wrong as a result. Okay. Now, what but I'm saying is the difference between that and the Trinity. Sorry, one more thing. The difference between that and the Trinity is that the Trinity you have three things: God, Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, all of which are meant to amount to one thing at the same time. What I'm saying is. 
That's the problem because it describes God. Whereas here you have free will and determinism. Whereas you would think to yourself, yeah. you think to yourself, this is how could both exist at the same time? But here we're not referring to God. We're referring to God's actions. And since you've already admitted and we've already said that God can do something, can do something so long as it's not against his nature and it's not uh, logically implausible, it's in the third category. So therefore, God can create that system where you have free will and determinism at the same time. Do you agree with that? No. Go on. Why? Um, because uh, free will and determinism are incompatible. So, Seemingly a lot of, one second, no, the majority yeah. of philosophers who study um, metaphysics and, and the metaphysics of free will would say that determinism itself um, and um, indeterminism, free will, um, are incompatible. And so, some okay. people try and put compatibilist okay. uh, theories forward. First of all, how, people, do you, how do you know they're incompatible? How do you okay. know that? So, how have you come okay, to part of um, free will is um, the yeah. ability yeah. to um, choose alternative possibilities. So in any situation I could be, I could choose maybe A or B, for yes, example. Yes, yes. Okay? Now if God has determined how things are going to be yes. prior to that yes, point, yes. I cannot at that place that I am at that time choose maybe B if God has determined for okay. me to choose Now a. let me ask you a question. Yes. From your religious perspective, yes. yeah? First question. Is God in complete control of the universe? Yes. Past, present and future? Yes. Is he in complete control of the actions of human beings? Yeah, I will qualify it. Okay. No, hold on. So, can hold I, on, hold on. Yeah. Is God's control of my actions or not? Yes. But okay, therefore, in the, the, no, 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 I don't. Yes, you do. No, no. I don't hold to determinism. No, hold on, so, I, so, God is not... So, hold on. Okay. Now, let me just ask you a question. Because this is the problem, right? If you're saying that God did not determine the future, and he did not, first of all, did God know the future? Yes. So, for example, you're a human being, yeah? Before you die, does God know you're going to go to heaven or hell? Yes. He has that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Is he in control of it? Yes, indirectly. Right? Yes, okay. So he's in, he knows it, he's in control of it. What is different between what I believe and what you believe? So determinism, like I said. What's the difference? Saying, okay. I hold to something called middle knowledge. Okay. That God has middle knowledge. God knows what I would do in any situation that I'm placed in. So, he and knows. He's in of it. One second. So, can I, can and I, he can stop you from doing it. Can I explain this? Yeah. Yes, he can. But there's a way for it to be done. So, so I just want to know what the difference is between what I believe. Okay, can I? I'll explain it. So, middle knowledge is saying that God <coughs> possesses the knowledge of what I would do in any situation. So, if I was placed in this situation now, he knew if I was placed in this time, this situation, I would be speaking to you. But let's say he was to place me in a different situation, I would do something else. And so, the way God is in control of what I do. Is simply because he places me in situations knowing what I would freely determine myself to do. Okay, same here. So, no, no, it's not because you, because no, you hold to determinism, saying that no, God. No, we don't hold, no, no, we don't hold to. We, you just said you did. No, 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 that's exactly wrong. Yeah? We don't hold to. No, 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 we don't hold to determinism, and we don't hold to the fact that human beings have complete autonomy. Either. We say that human beings have autonomy or free will, but at the same time. God is still in control. Do you agree Yes, but I'm... Uh, but so I, what's the difference between no, what the problem, no, the problem is, is God... Um, is there certain things or certain situations that God can place me in? He can do... No, he has... So let's say God didn't want me to perform an action. Okay? Could God make me perform an action? So let's say God didn't want me to come to the world. For whatever reason, God didn't want me to be placed in this situation where I will come to the park today. Okay? So, God didn't want me to do that. But, God couldn't have placed me in this no, no, situation. It's not like that. And I, would, I, I, know you, I know what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that it's got, basically, is God the complete puppeteer and are we the puppets? Yeah? Yeah. No, okay. no. That, that's what we don't believe. We believe in what you just mentioned. So, actually, here there's no difference of opinion. Me and you believe in the same thing here. We both believe that God has the power, ability, knowledge of the future power of all human beings within the future and at the same time that human beings have free will. Is God able okay. to put these two I, things okay. into action? I, yes. I, do, I do hold to this position. Yes. But I do so see the that, problem? The problem is I do see their holes. I do see their so holes. you hold that position? No, I hold to this position. So what's I, the, I hold why are you the, arguing with me on it? But maybe it's because... Um, maybe you just want no, to see how I'm going to uh, react to no, 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 no. I hold to this position but I see that there's holes. And so a lot of philosophers will actually say that it's not possible for God to be in control and know the future. No, and okay. Be free. But do you know what that's based on? It's based on two or three misconceptions. One of them is that we're basing it on our limited inductive experience. Number one. 
Number two, we are control we are basically limiting uh, the analogy to what we can do. What we can see, what we can basically say, what we can observe. For God it's a different story. It, it depends. It depends what so basically look, yeah. what seems to be the case from our microscopic perspective is not necessarily the case from God's macro perspective. Right, okay, so okay. what we're saying is that why for us, our limited experience has made us believe that it's impossible for there to be autonomous decision making at the same time as God being in control. What I'm saying is that that limited understanding of, of uh, human interaction is based on experience within the human realm. So what God does, what, can we, what he can do is not limited to that microscopic understanding. Yes, but, it's, 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 but like I said, I was just saying my position that holds you, there are holes in it. And the reason being is that there's no way for God to ground. I think it's a better way of putting it. You can say that. No, 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 there's holes, there's holes. No, 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 no it's not holes. <coughs> I'll tell you why it's not holes. You just say that. This goes back to the argument of the fallacy of incredulity. Yeah? Where you say that something can't be the case because I don't understand it. Now that, just because you don't understand the mechanisms of something, it doesn't necessitate that that is a wrong thing to believe in. What I'm saying is, I personally believe that God is autonomous. Uh, God is autonomous himself. He's endowed human beings with free will, and at the same time, he's in control. From a human perspective, that seems an impossibility. For God, it's not an impossibility, and it doesn't contradict his nature. And it's not. You get it? And then that means that we have to be quite skeptical about um, because if we, if we can have that position about God's actions. You know, how does God do this? Why does God do this? If we can't really ever come to an understanding no, okay, of no, there's not yet, exactly. Yeah, then, then we have to be quite sceptical. No, 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 we don't have that. It doesn't follow. No, no. Because what? not knowing how God does things, it doesn't follow that you have to be sceptical about them. No, no, it doesn't no, follow. You just have to... No, here, here. No, 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 here you not, have to just no, realise no, the limitation. One second. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to be sceptical about it um, at the onset. But if we know that we're never going to come to an understanding of how something works, yeah. then we can say that more than likely, it probably doesn't work in that way that we say so. So, it's no, an example, because sure. I, could, I could sit here and say, I don't understand how there could be a married bachelor. But one day, because of my limited understanding, someone could. So it's not a logical uh, impossibility. Absolutely. But then we have no, to be sceptical about what is a logical impossibility. No, You're absolutely right. Because everything, no, we can no, question everything. No, no. Yeah. Uh, no, what you just said there, bang on the money yeah I have an understanding of what a married bachelor is why because for me someone who's married is someone who's in a relationship with someone else a bachelor is someone who's not married or not being married yeah or looking for marriage whatever it may be define it from my perspective it's impossible for those two things to be together like a tall short man from my perspective it's impossible to be for those two things to be together what I'm saying is that the reason why I would deem this as a logical fallacy yeah, to have those two things together, which are seemingly contradictory, uh, contradictory, is because I have a microscopic understanding. Now, when we put determinism and free will together, it's the same thing. So I'm looking at it from my human perspective. I'm saying that God has a macro, not a micro perspective. Therefore, how God operates those two things together is doesn't need to be understood in order for it to be true. So long as you say that God can put those two things together, the problem is actually okay. solved. But I would just track him back a bit. I would um, sort of go against your example, or oh, sorry, your dichotomy that you have. That we, if we don't fully understand God's action, it's fine. But if we don't fully understand how God's nature could be a certain way, it's not fine. Because I think you're doing a false division there. Because the way God acts is actually how he is. So if God is someone who does certain actions, we could say that's how God is like. Okay, okay look, I so, so if. I had your position, which I don't. If well, you I don't have my position. No, 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 your position about God's nature and, and all those sort of things. If I had the position... Which part? That, sorry? No, if I had the position that I think I can just, you know, put my hands together and say, I don't understand the Trinity, it's a mystery, but it's true. And so, because but I have I, a limit... One second. That is your position. One, no, it's not. What's I would say that we do, can understand the Trinity. How do you understand it? Do you want to go through again? We went through it at the beginning. I know, but I just don't get how you okay. understand it. We can go through it again. No, no, sorry. Because I don't hold that position that's a mystery. You don't hold it? Not at all. So I think that's an incorrect position. Yeah. I think we can logically understand how God is three persons and one essence. We've been talking about two hours. I know we have, and we've got to finish. Let's but, finish off, let's wrap up. But, shot them. I've got to rush off. It's good speaking. I think we learned a lot from each other. Well, all we, yeah, we always do. Thank you very much. Nice I really always learn.